Good morning. Welcome to your Monday morning, early morning intuitive guidance. Holy cold out there. Wow. So we'll all stay inside and be cozy and snuggly for a while. I'm Dr. Bonnie Nussbaum, America's kick-ass coach and psychologist. Here are some words of wisdom for our day. And in fact, our word for today is wisdom, which I thought was kind of interesting because we had this card shortly ago. So the universe has given us that nudge that we really need to pay attention. Good morning to whomever just popped on. We'll see if your name pops up. Cindy, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little frog today. So again, whenever we see something a couple of times in a row, we really want to prick our ears up and pay attention because there's something there for us. Um, and again, when you have a deck that is a 53-card deck, good morning, Tom, glad you're here. And within a short span of time, the same thing keeps coming up. It's kind of like kind of like when the little kid is going, Mom, 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 Mom. <laughs> we want to listen when it's still at this stage and not when it has to whack us upside the head by, with a two-by-four to get our attention, all right? So we're just going to flow into listening to the guidance here today. Our deck is the Priestess of Light deck by Sandra Ann Taylor and Kimberly Weber. And the, the, the artwork on these cards is just beautiful, I think. So a couple of nice deep breaths in and out. Welcome to the others who have joined us. Your names aren't popping up, but glad you're here. Just breathing deeply and easily, flushing out any old stuck energy. Allowing yourself to refresh. It's kind of shaken off a little bit. And here is our card for today. Wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom. Good morning, Diane. We are getting a dose of wisdom today. Glad you're here. So this is Sarasvati. And you can see she has more than two arms. How lucky she is. It would be so easy to do more things if we had more arms, don't you think? <laughs> so... Here is our word. Just kind of tune in. Listen for the part that chimes for you. Wisdom. Learning, joy, art, music. The goddess Sarasvati holds a musical instrument in two hands. So I'll move it a little closer so you can see that. Yep. And extends her other arms outward in joy. She stands at the door to the temple, encouraging you to enter a new period of learning and exploration. Think about that. Are you ready for another round of learning and exploration? I, one thing that blows my mind is the number of people, I'm 61, the number of people my age who have not picked up a book and read it since they got out of high school. Mind-boggling to me. Mind-boggling. There's so much interesting stuff out there to expose ourselves to. Mind-boggling. This card heralds a time of deepening wisdom for you. It may be gained through personal investigation. What are you interested in? Google that shit. Learn something. <laughs> or through study, or through school or other formal courses of study. Don't dismiss this potential for learning. There is profound gratification that comes from this pursuit, whatever the subject may be. I don't know if any of you remember back a while, you know, a couple of decades ago, Leo Buscaglia was all the rage. And one of the things he often talked about was how his father made it very important for those children to have learned something every day. So they get to the dinner table and his father would say to him, Felice, what did you learn today? And Leo Buscaglia would go, you know, but he got to the point where he was smart. He knew his dad was going to ask. So he had, he went and he looked something up and he goes, the population of Nepal is, and he'd rattle off the number and his dad would go, huh? And on they'd go. And then he'd ask the next kid and the next kid and the next kid. <clears throat> but it set him up to be a lifelong learner. I need to learn something every day. Think about that. If you stretched your brain a little bit every day, how helpful that would be for you, how gratifying that would be for you. You learn something new. Isn't this interesting? I love, like if I find a word I don't know, I love to Google it, figure out what does that mean? How could I use that? What would, what would be um, a good situation for me to be able to use this new word in? Okay? 
it's possible that your path of study will relate to some form of art or music. So I'm going on retreat starting today. This afternoon I head for Milwaukee. Tomorrow morning I fly out. I wonder what I will learn. It's a whole different culture. It's a whole different group of people. What will I learn from them? What will I open myself to learning? There's going to be all kinds of cool things to explore there that are not typical of Wisconsin in winter. So I think that will be very interesting. If you have an interest in these or other creative endeavors, now would be the time to dive right in. I will do that. Will you? Take a class, go to a museum, or surround yourself with the music and art forms that bring you joy. Another thing that I think is so interesting, and I have certainly had this happen in my world, you live somewhere and there are um, landmarks and um, things that people from other countries come to see. Have you seen them? Have you seen them? When I moved to Michigan, the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore, people come from all over the world to see that, all over the world. And I'm like, okay, I cannot live up here and not have seen what people travel from other countries to see. So I went several times. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But how many of those things that are near you that um, other people come from a distance to see, have you not seen? What are the museums that everybody comes to your area for? Good morning, Beth. What are the the shows and the um, musicals and the, the um, theaters and all those things that traveling stuff, when there's traveling stuff that comes in. I remember there was an Andy Warhol exhibit many years ago at um, the museum in Milwaukee. And so I took the kids to that. It was so interesting. There was all kinds of stuff that, I mean, you think of Andy Warhol and you think of soup cans, right? Good morning, Susan. Welcome. And there was a period of time in his life where he had been hired to take pictures of people killed in car accidents. So they had this whole little section of the Warhol exhibit that was the pictures he had taken of dead people in car accidents. People hanging out car windows. just all, And I'm like, this is macabre, but it's also interesting that this was part of his work history, you know? So what's in your area that you have not yet explored? I challenge you to go explore it. All right, let's see what else we have. There's a swan down at the very bottom of the card. So Sarasvati is playing her music and raising her arms in joy. And down at the bottom, we've got a set of swans. And there's probably a name for a set of swans. I know there's a murder of geese. I'm not sure about swans, but anyway. The swan represents the connection between the mind and heart. So think about that. I want you to just breathe into that connection between your mind and your heart. We have gotten way too far away from our heart. There's that quote, and I don't even remember who said it, but the gist is that it might have been Einstein. I'm not sure. Um, but the gist of it is that we, the mind, a bevy, a herd, a game, or a flight. Fabulous. Thank you. That's, that's our swan, our crowd of swans. <laughs> a bevy. I like that. A bevy. <laughs> that our mind is meant to be the faithful servant of our heart and soul. Not the other way around. Not the other way around. The mind is not meant to be driving the bus. It does not do a good job. Okay. The heart and soul is meant to be driving the bus. And the mind can be that faithful servant. Well, let's go left here. Let's go right there. Maybe it makes suggestions. But it is not running the show. All right? So we need to practice shifting that around. Getting your, our minds back in service to our heart and soul. Okay? The swan represents the connection between the mind and heart. And as you open your mind to greater understanding and to joyous new experiences, your heart will glow with inner satisfaction. Yes, like Tony Robbins says, your brain cannot make you happy. Yes, 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 yes. Because part of your brain is that reptilian brain, which is all about survival. So what is a survival brain gonna do? Pay attention to all the things that aren't good, 
right? That has some value. If your car is um, being, if, if, if a truck is barreling down on your car, yeah, you want to do something about it. But how often does that happen, right? Yes, your heart has been very active. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Sometimes it does crack open to let the light in and let the light out because we are the light. We are the light, all right? Your heart will glow with inner satisfaction. In addition, I love this next line. You ready for it? Your life force will sing with beauty, grace, and irresistible attraction. Your life force will sing with beauty, grace, and irresistible attraction. I've been thinking a lot about grace lately. And um, all of the things that happen to us that are difficult and all of the things that that we <clears throat> see in this world, um, the murders, the mass shootings, the, all this stuff, somewhere in all of that mess and pain and um, uproar, upheaval, chaos, there's grace. Always look for the grace. Always look for the grace. The affirmation is, I'm gonna show you your card again, I always choose to learn and grow. The music and art of life inspires me. I always choose to learn and grow. The music and art of life inspires me. And again, I'm going to pull on some of the things we've been talking about lately. It doesn't have to be leaps and bounds. It can be baby steps. So, for example, if you have always wanted to learn to play a particular musical instrument, baby steps. Maybe you acquire the instrument if you don't already have it. Maybe you go to a music store and wander through and just look at the instruments. Maybe you find someone that you know who plays that instrument and just ask some questions. Again, baby steps. Yes, like Mr. Rogers said, always look for the helpers. I still remember a, a pencil drawing that a young woman in high school drew right after 9-11 and it showed the the um, buildings coming down and the, the turmoil and the chaos and whatever and up above her representation was Jesus with his arms out collecting the people and I just thought that was a beautiful representation of finding finding beauty, guidance, grace in disastrous times and yes if you're if, if there's something um, not good going on so so oftentimes when there's a natural disaster if you look the next day or two you'll see armies of people helping people cleaning things up people making sure those who were affected have what they need good morning Gwen glad you're here uh, feeding people etc so um, we need to pay attention to where are the helpers? Where are the helpers? So, wisdom. Wisdom is our card today. Learning, joy, art, and music. When you think of wisdom, do you think of art and music? I think we've been so led to focus on math and science and all that other stuff. But art and music really are cutting edge things. Many of the innovations that actually happen in science and math come from art and music. Do you think that um, sacred geometry didn't show up first in nature and in art? Then it became a thing in math and science. So we really need to stop denigrating the arts put some energy into the arts. If you want to think about kids in school, how many of us were actually saved because of art or music? That the academic stuff really wasn't our bag. Um, maybe it wasn't even that we weren't smart enough to get it. I think I was smart enough to get it. I didn't care. They didn't move me. Um, sometimes when we had the story problems in math, those moved me. Those because it was about people or animals or something I could relate to. But simple rote memorization, table of squares, that kind of stuff. <laughs> but art and music 
could get me involved, could get me interested. I loved art class. I loved playing around with all that stuff. I loved getting messy. That was good stuff. So what do you have for art and music in your life right now? What do you have for art and music in your life right now? If you look around and you go, yeah, there ain't much, let's resurrect some things. What did you love to do as a kid? If you, <laughs> I'm going to make stuff up here, but if you loved those little weaving looms, go buy one. What the heck? Go to Walmart in the, in the, um, toy department or the crafting department or whatever. Pick some stuff up. If you liked beading, get some beading stuff. It doesn't mean you have to go nuts. Just get a project. Do you want to hook a rug? What do you want to do? Something, because part of what I think happens when we're doing art is we move into a contemplative state of being. And our mind, which is meant to be the faithful servant of our heart and soul, can go on autopilot in ways and can tap into much greater fonts of information, knowledge, wisdom, um, expansion, etc., than when we're busy thinking, 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 driving ourselves crazy, right? So that is your mission for today. I want you resurrecting some art. I want you creating something. I don't care what it is. If you just take a, a pen and scribble on a piece of paper, cool. I always, most of us had something that we doodled when we were kids. For me, it was like a little old lady with a bun in her hair and a little, little knitting needle through the bun. I don't know why I doodled her. I just doodled her all the time. What did you doodle all the time? Doodle it again. Doodle it again. Maybe you did horses. Maybe you did uh, big-eyed kids. Maybe you did trees. Whatever you did, doodle it again. Let's see what you think. All right? So, as of tomorrow morning, I am not sure what's going to happen with Yemig for the week while I'm gone. My hope is that I have enough signal in the various places where I am that I can do a Yemig of some sort. I'm not taking any cards along. Um, I think Kayleen maybe has cards down there, so if she does, I may use hers. Um, but if not, I can certainly allow Spirit to give me a topic of something to talk about with you every morning if I can actually get a signal and get on. So, have an awesome day and a week. Hopefully I will see you again tomorrow morning. Remember, you're capable of far more than you think you are, including tapping into that creativity. Bye-bye.